So on the sweet will of our Guru Day, we are going on to search for Chaitanya Charitamrita statements, quotes, and now we are in Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi. We finished last time Vilap Kuzumanjali. And now we are searching for... And if someone of you is inspired, you can also search. There are a lot, a lot of pages and a lot of quotes. And we can also discuss what you found. Always invited and also always invited to share your feelings and whatever you think which fits. Whenever you want, anytime, please interrupt. It's not a disturbance. It is always like a treasure if other devotees also reveal their inner feelings. So we will start today with verse number three of Sri Sri Radha Sasura Nidhi. And immediately in the commentary of verse number three, there's a quote. So we will start with the verse to get the connection. I offer my obeisances to the glories of Maharaj Prishabhanu's daughter, Sri Radhika. The beautiful dust of whose lotus feet is hardly attained by Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva and others, and whose merciful glance which is endowed with the most astonishing prowess, showers the nectar of the essence of all human pursuits. Love of God. So I will read again because it's not so easy to get the whole thing. I offer my obeisances to the glories of Maharaj Prashabhanu's daughter, Sri Radhika. The beautiful dust of whose lotus feet is hardly attained by Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva and others and whose merciful glance, which is endowed with the most astonishing brows, showers the nectar of the essence of all human pursuits, love of God. So now comes the commentary from Srila Anandadas Babaji. In Chaitanya Charitamrita it is said, Chitta Tritta Kohilage Mahima Kyana Hoite. One's heart becomes fixed in faith when one is aware of God's greatness. And for this reason, Sripat continues his auspicious invocation of Radharasa Sudanidi by praising the prowess of Sri Radha. Rasa, spiritual flavor, is built on the foundation of tattva, spiritual truth. When the foundation is not there, when one disregards or does not know spiritual truth, the rasa may seem to be mundane. So it's very interesting here, again, Chitta Tritta Kori Lage Mahima Kyanavite. 
Once heart becomes fixed in faith, when one is aware of God's greatness. And for this reason, Sripad continues his auspicious invocation of Radha Rasa Sudanidi by praising the brows of Sri Radha. Because he's not interested in God's brows, but he's very much interested in the brows of Sri Radha. Because this God is lying at the feet of Radha. So what is the prowess of Radha? This is much more interesting. So immediately it's very clear whom he praises. And in this connection, it is said here that spiritual flavor is built on the foundation of tattva, spiritual truth. So, of course, we have to know what is the spiritual truth. And, of course, we have to know who is this Krishna, this blue beloved boy from Radha, who he is, we have to know. It's the foundation. Otherwise, the rasa could seem to be mundane if it's not clear that is, it is an exchange of the most pure love between Radha and Krishna. So it's the foundation. But most important here is that Srila Prabhupada Saraswati is praising Radharani. Maharaj Prashabhanu's daughter. Because she is what he wants. Her seva is what he wants. So Srila Anandadas Babaji is doing this, with making this point very clear. And he quotes, therefore, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Chitta Trita Kurilage Mahima Kyana Hoite. One's heart becomes fixed in faith when one is aware of God's greatness. So when we are aware, of Radharani's greatness, then our truth can be, our faith can be fixed. Isn't it? When we know that our Radharani can always defeat Krishna, When we know that she is Aradhika, she is the greatest servant. When we know about her character, we will hear about her seven oceans. We will hear about other qualities of her character, which makes it very clear who she is. So when we know that, our faith is growing. And this is needed. We know, because in day-to-day -day life, things can happen that we may have some doubts or some 
problems to go on in our spiritual life. But if this faith is strong because we know the power of Radha, and especially we know that she is Karuna Mai, she will always give us shelter because she's even, even Krishna is taking shelter of her. Even Krishna is taking shelter of her. So what do we have to fear? If we know that, then we have a very good base. So it's amazing because in the beginning of Shishi Radha Rasa Sudha Nidhi, Shala Prabhupada Saraswati makes everything so clear. He makes it immediately very clear whom he is serving, why, who is the most browse person existing. He makes it everything very clear. So Niti Didi, you're also here. Rade Rade, you want to share something on that maybe? and all Dandavats to all Vaishnavas. No, I just uh, entered and I was just thinking, is it so that you are doing now Radha Rasuda Zidniti and uh, Vilap Kushmanjali is, is done? Oh, yes. Yes. Last time we had this change and it was a very ecstatic change because the end of Vilap Kushmanjali and the beginning of Shri Shri Radha, uh, Radha Rasuda Nidhi. They fitted so perfectly together. Wow. It was very, very tasteful. But there's always video, so you, it's, it's not that you lost something. Every time we can see it again. Because we also exchanged last time, some devotees also came out with their feelings. I always like this when others are also giving their feelings because it makes it more broad, may, makes it more tasteful. So please, whenever you have this feeling, share something from your heart. Aurobanaji, I just wanted to be um, updated from you. So how are you doing it now? You're doing Radha Rasuda Nidhi and check uh, for the Chaitanya Chaitamita quotes and then you will discuss that. Yeah, is that? Okay, wow. Yes. In the same way of Shishi Vilap Kusumanjali, now we are mm -hmm. in Shishi Radhara Sasudanidi, quotes from Chaitanya Charit Amrita. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. So the next quote I found in Chaitanya Charit Amrita, in the same verse number three, is one page more uh, yeah one page more far away some something like that in chaitanya chart amita madhya lila chapter 8 is explained gopi anugati vina aishvarya kyane vachi leo nahi poi vrachenda nandane tahate trishtanta lakshmi korila bhajana tatapina pavile if you worship the Prince of Braj in a reverential mood, without following in the footsteps of the gopis, you will not attain him. Lakshmi Devi is the best example of that. Although she did worship Krishna as the prince of Braj, she did not attain him. The Lord's greatest devotees, Uddhava Mahashaya, was astonished when he saw the greatness of the gopis' love for Krishna and he praised them. 
praying for a birth in Braj, even as a blade of grass, so that he could get the gopis' food dust on his head. This is written with golden syllables in the page of Srimad Bhagavat, Canto 10, Chapter 47. From this it is clear how hard it is to attain the food dust of Sri Radha. This is again a wonderful moment to understand how lucky we are. In what a lucky position are we that we can hear that we can share about Shri Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi openly. This is a very, very, very special moment. In all the other ages it was, it was not possible. Only now in Kali Yuga, because of the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the mercy of the six Goswamis and the mercy of the followers of Rupa Raghunath, like our Gurudev. It's the mercy that we can share about these topics. And in this connection, it is understandable that even great devotees like Brahma, Shiva or others can not, can not attain the food dust of Rata so easy. So he, who is in a better position? Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, or the Manjari? So what a mercy we have in this age, in this moment, that we get this mercy and we can openly discuss. That's also a special mercy in the special mercy, because more than 500 years now, 530 years about that, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was here and this, let's say, knowledge is here. But who distributed it openly, discussed about Radharani's glory so openly? No one. It was always hidden. But a few souls opened that theme up completely and they are discussing it now openly. So we are in a very, very special position now. This is the mercy, the greatest mercy in the greatest mercy inside of the greatest mercy. It's good to be aware of that, because this is not going on all the time. It's a very rare moment to get this mercy like that, so easy. Govanaji, I remember that uh, once I asked Gurudev, why is it so that in this Kali Yuga, the, the greatest mercy is, is delivered? So, to say, I mean, like you said, even Udhavaji, he was so full of awe and reverence and so full of, you know, thinking that he knew what to say to Mother Yashoda, who was crying in streams of tears. Oh, don't, don't worry. Your son is Bhagavan. Your son is Paramatma. Your son is uh, 
the supreme <laughs> and she was just thinking that he is crazy look his shoes are standing there and so he was also in this category he had to go in the school of prem and now we we are not qualified we are very fallen but in this K uh, age of kali yuga everything is so crazy that the uh, lord chaitanya uh, radha and mohan decided to come together and give this to those who are really ready to get you know out of this mess <laughs> to really have a desire to leave this behind us probably also because many many lifetimes there has been already so much you know over how do you say input religious input and all kinds of input in this uh, little soul that tries to find their way and gurudev said in this kali yoga everything is ups and up and down and topsy turvy everything is in a mess so in that time it is a special blessings for those souls who have the good luck to be here at that time when chaitanya mahaprabhu was there that we can uh, we don't deserve it it's not a matter of deserving it's just a matter of good luck that is so beautiful because once i asked this question also when we were in parikrama like you i was asking brahma cannot have it uh, ma uh, Shiva cannot have it. Uddhava can wants to be a blade of grass, but I should be thinking, uh, believing that I am able to be a mandari. <laughs> That's quite amazing. <laughs> it makes no sense to me, right? From the mm, mental point of view, it makes no sense. But it is undeserved. Unexpected. Uh, in normal way. My God. Sure. I'm crying. I'm crying. Oh my God. Why are you crying, Radha Charanji? I'm crying. I'm trying to translate for sure with that one song. Sorry. She asked me. Oh, I Chow. <laughs> it just came in, it popped in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. From the from the logic of the material world, it doesn't make any sense. You may say. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. This is mixed up. On the other hand, we can see that actually we are living in duality. So right. when the most worst thing right. happening then also the most best is there also so in this way it makes a little bit sense but that doesn't mean that we actually deserve it no um, it's pure mercy so from the logic of radharani's love it makes of course sense because she wants to give always the most fallen persons the biggest chance and the fastest way to come back to her love, into her shelter. So this is love. Actually, it makes sense out of the view of love, but only out of the view of love it makes really sense because a mother is always taking care of the children and the more fallen or in, in a bad position they are, the more mercy the mother is giving. So in this way, it makes a little bit sense. Doesn't mean that we deserve it, no. Does the child deserve to be loved? It's just love. Yeah, the helplessness, that is a good um, point, uh, Gauravani Ji. And uh, I seen it again and again. Um, when the disciple or when the children are more helpless or the dasi this helplessness invokes mercy yes i could see also in gurudev i was actually watching this when i i came i had 
It was actually a very bad position in my life, a very, a very bad moment. If I could met him before, I could have served him much more, like I did in ISKCON. So I was always thinking, like, why I didn't met him before? I could give much more. Now I'm in such a bad position, burned out and, you know, completely finished. But then I saw, no, he had to come now. Otherwise, who, whom I could trust in that, in, in that moment, actually? No one else anymore because of this experience. So it was needed that much more mercy was there in this moment. And I could see that even I behaved strange, you know, I know that from Gurudev's view, I'm a strange guy because he was growing up in a completely other world, you know. In my world, Western countries here, I'm completely, I, I may think I'm normal, but in that world, I'm completely, you know, something very strange, not understandable. But anyway, he's giving mercy, more mercy, and then he understands, oh my God, like Prabhupada, once he was asked uh, by a disciple, you know, Prabhupada, can I tell you something private from another devotee? And Prabhupada said, yes, do. And he said, you know, this guy, he has, uh, he's very fallen, he has sexual relationship and this and that. And then he, he was thinking, now Prabhupada would maybe uh, do something about this, you know, uh, get this guy here and uh, smash him or something like this. No, Prabhupada started to cry. He said that he is so moved and so sad that his devotees cannot not even follow the four principles because they're so fallen. So he was crying. So this love, this prema, this mercy, which is there, is giving more and more mercy. The more is needed, the more it will give. And this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mood. And that's why we are in such a wonderful, enormous, wonderful, first-class position that we are here now and we can have exchange about these topics, exchange about the highest love, although we may come from the most fallen positions. And this is like a beggar gets some tons of gold out of nothing. But this is just describing the glories of our Swamini. And the qualities of our Swamini is actually our good luck. And the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is our qualification. Radharani's mercy coming through Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to us is our qualification. So this is going to make us qualified, like we heard yesterday. The embrace, the embrace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Rupa Goswami when he said how he could know what is going inside when he was singing in front of the Radhayatra car, the car of Jagannath. So how he could know what was inside of me? And we know it's just the mercy. And by embracing him, he took him. It's my Rupa. And then he said, 
let him know everything. So I am his. Let him know everything about this rasa, about this confidential topics. Like with us, we know everything now. It is openly. We can discuss it. So Rupa is something else, a Nitya, Sitta, Kinkari, but he is showing us how to get the mercy. Like a chain of embrace, we are just in the line, we get some embrace of our Gurudev and he is offering to, offering us to the lotus feet of Radharani. In this way we are in the chain. We are one of the small things in the chain. By embrace, one is embracing the other. And this is the mercy we got. My God. My God. Radha. This is the mercy and this is what Sri Srila Prabhupada Saraswati also wants to say here, Oh my God, my Radha! And he's starting so wonderful. I'm really astonished how he is describing Radharani's glories. This is so wonderful. But we can see, although we got this mercy, it's not so easy to get for the ones who are in a reverential mood. They cannot get it. Not even Lakshmi Devi. So it's going on here, I will read more. Then again it is said Sarvarta Sara Rasavarshi Kripatra Trishte. The merciful clans of Sri Radha showers the quint essence of all human goals of life. The merciful clans of Sri Radha showers the quintessence of all human goals of life. That quintessence is love of Krishna and Sri Radhika showers it all around. And here comes the next statement of Chaitanya Charit Amrita, Adi Lila 7. Krishna Vishaya Kaprema Panchama Purusharta Yara Agetrina Tulya Chari Purusharta Panchama Purusharta Premanandam Rita Sindhu Mukshadi Anandayara Nahe Eka Bindu Panjama Purusharta E Prema Mahadhana Krishnera Madhuryarasa Guraya Aswadana Brema Hoite Hoi Krishna Nicha Bhakta Vasha Brema Hoite Pai Krishnera Seva Shukarasa I know that Gurudev explained this very often about the fifth goal of life. Love of Krishna is the fifth and highest goal of human life compared to which 
religiosity, economical development, sense enjoyment and liberation, the other four goals, are as insignificant as blades of grass. So the real goal, the highest goal is Brema. And this is actually the only thing which immediately brings us out of this material life. And this is showered by the merciful glance of our Radhika. Just by a glance. So if we just have darshan, it is showered on us. Brahma, the fifth goal of life, is like an ocean of nectarian loving bliss. compared to which the bliss of liberation and other goals of life are not even one drop. The great treasure of love of God is the fifth goal of human life which makes the devotee relish Krishna's sweet taste. Through Brahma, Krishna becomes controlled by his devotees. And through Brahma, the devotees relish the blissful taste of Krishna's service. Srila Anandadas Babaji is such an expert, giving this wonderful quote and wonderful sentence here. The great treasure of love of God is the fifth goal of human life, which makes the devotees relish Krishna's sweet taste. Now, Radhadasi would say, I don't want to relish Krishna's taste. But, true Brahma, true Radharani, true the eyes, of Radharani, through her feelings, through Prema, through Mahabhav. Through Prema, the devotee relished the blissful taste of Krishna's service. Only through our Radha we can relish the blissful taste of Krishna's service completely. When Sri Radha simply casts her merciful glance, this love rasa is attained without any further endeavor. Again, when Sri Rata simply casts her merciful glance, this love rasa is attained without any further endeavor and flows in innumerable directions. So are we in good luck? Are we in a good position? We are in the best time and in the best position because of the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Just by the glance 
And of course, it's the same with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, because it is Radha's mood coming out. So there is a quote from Brihat Bhagavat, Amrit 2.5.233. Sa radhika bhagavati kvachit ikshyate chet brema tad anubhavam richati murtiman saha. When Goddess Radhika is ever seen, one sees brema in very person and one gains experience of that love. When Goddess Radhika is ever seen, one sees Prema in very person and one gains experience of that love. Who else is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? So, by having a darshan, it's done. No further endeavor is needed. What a mercy! You're doing bhajan? That's mercy. You think you're doing it? No, it's mercy. You can do it because you got the mercy. I know for myself, in the beginning I was doing so much, it was the mercy of Prabhupada, but underst I, I didn't understand in the beginning. I thought, oh yes, I'm doing fine. I will do like this and that, and I had a program for my spiritual life, but actually at one point it was gone. And then in a hard time, I understood, oh my God, it wasn't my endeavor, it was just mercy. So by mercy, we can do it. Like a small child can bake a cake together with mama, by the mercy of mama in the kitchen. Without Mama's mercy, this child cannot bake a, uh, this, this cake, isn't it? But it will feel like, oh yes, look what I did! <laughs> yes, it's the mercy. It's the mercy of our Swamini. It's the mercy of this Parampara. And it's the embrace of the chain of love. And we got this embrace, so we are so lucky. Especially in this present age of Kali, the age of quarrel, the day has come to directly experience this. For now, Sri Gaurasundara has descended, accepting the mood and lustre of Sri Radhika and blessing the people of the world who see his brilliant golden aura with Prema. Such is the prowess of Sri Radha's aura. Such is the prowess of Sri Radha's aura. When there is such a great descent of Sri Krishna Chandra, 
that can distribute love of himself. Or when Sri Radhika manifests some descent, then through his or her audience, that Brahma must be experienced. That's a quote from Brihat Bhagavatamrita 234. It must be experienced. You have no other chance. The mercy is so strong. This word speaks about Sriman Mahaprabhu. Sri Radha's merciful cleanse showers the nectar of love of Krishna, which is the quint essence of all human goals. This means that love of Krishna is sweetened by love of Sri Radha. She is Vrindavan's personified sweetness, and she is the all in all of the Vrindavan pastimes. She is Vrindavan's personified sweetness, and she is the all in all of the Vrindavan pastimes. In the 80th verse of this book, Sripad explains that the worship of Krishna without the worship of Radha is only a drop of the nectar ocean of divine love. Only a drop. Therefore, the very life of love of Krishna Chandra is love of Sri Radha's lotus feet. I offer my obeisances unto the greatness of Sri, whose merciful glance showers the nectar of love of Krishna, through which we can attain his lotus feet. Sriman Mahadev has said, Gorati chuvinayas tu, shamati cha samarcha yet, yapedvadya tevapi, sabhavet pataki shive. O shive, poverty. Anyone who meditates on Krishna, worship him or does chapa of his holy name, without worshipping Radha, is a sinner. O Shiva, anyone who meditates on Krishna, worships him or does chapa of his holy name without worshipping Radha, is a sinner. Any questions? I think it's very logic. If anyone tries to serve you, but wants to go around your beloved, what do you feel about this person? You like this? <laughs> no, this is Behave, this is a behavior of enemies.
that means someone wants to steal something wants from something from you wants to cheat you something like this it has to be a sinner it's very logical otherwise how he can disrespect your beloved So these were the quotes in verse number three of Shishirada Rasa Sulanidi. In verse four there are more, of course. <laughs> you are invited to share on that what we heard now, what we discussed now, and share your feelings. Otherwise, then I will just go on with verse number four. And here also there are very nice quotes from Chaitanya Charitamrita. I will start with the verse because in the beginning of the commentary, there's the quote, so we can get the connection better if we hear the verse of Shishirada Rasa Sudanidi. I constantly remember the food dust of Sri Radhika, whose unlimited power instantly subdues even the supreme person Sri Krishna who himself cannot be easily seen even by the greatest devotees like Lord Brahma Lord Shiva Shukadev Muni Narada Muni and Bhishma. So it's underlining what we heard already. For these persons, it's not not so easy even to get the personal to get the personal contact actually, like. We know Shiva tried to come to the gopis and come to uh, wanted to go into that lilas, but he could not. So it's still about the dust of Shirata's lotus feet. In this verse, Sri Pat in his is in his Sadaka Vesh, external consciousness as a male devotee of Sriman Mahaprabhu. So we can see this is the base, a male devotee of Sriman Mahaprabhu. We want to serve Radha. In our male consciousness, we serve Sriman Mahaprabhu. Glorifying the greatness of Sri Radha's food dust. So even from this body, we can glorify the food dust of Sri Radha. That's the mercy of Sriman Mahaprabhu. Otherwise, how you could from a male from a male 
body, how you could, without Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, not possible. One may ask whether the word Purusha in the verse does not refer to Krishna's Purusha avatar, Mahavishnu. But the answer to this is that pure love of Govinda in the mood of Braj is only attainable on the strength of Sri Radha's food dust. In the Brahma Sanghita, Krishna is also called Adi Purusha or Parama Purusha in connection with his love alliance with the gopis. Krishna's childhood pastimes were still slightly perceived by Brahma, Shiva and Narada. But his romantic pastimes in adolescence were not seen by them nor by anyone else who identifies himself with his male body. Only Krishna's girlfriends can enter into this, no one else. Aishvarya Kyane Nahi Pai Brache Vrachendhanandana Raga Bhakti Brache Swayam Bhagavan Pai Vidhi Bhakti Prasadhe Dehe Vaikunjayai One who worship Krishna spontaneously will attain Braj. And one who worships him according to rules and regulations will become the Lord's associate in majestic by Kunta, Brahma, Shiva, Shuka, Narada and Bhishma are devotees of the latter kind and by them the sweetness of Govinda is barely perceived. The great power of Sri Rata's food dust easily controls that supreme person Shri Krishna. Srila Thakur Mahashaya, Narottam Das Thakur, sings Radhika Charana Renu Bhushana Koriyatanu Anaya Sepabe Giridhari Radhika Charana Shraya Ye Korese Mahashaya Tare Mo Iyo Pulihari If you decorate your body with Radhika's food dust, you will easily attain Giridhari. I praise the great soul who takes shelter of Radhika's lotus feet. The only means to subdue Sri Krishna in is love and devotion. The Upanishad say, Bhakti Vasha Purusha, the limit of love is called Mahabhav. Now comes the statement of Chaitanya Charit Amrita in this connection. Chaitanya Charit Amrita says, Brema Grame Bhati Hois Nehamana Pranaya Raga Anuraga Bhava Mahabhava hoy Premera Paramasara Mahabhava Jani Se Mahabhava Ruparata Takurani Brema gradually grows into Sneha 
mana, pranaya, raga, bhava, and mahabhava. The highest stage of prema is Mahabhava and Goddess Radha is the very form of that Mahabhava. Innumerable streams of the honey of Mahabhava flow from Sri Radhika's lotus feet. See verse number 94 of this book. Therefore it is understandable that Krishna is wholly controlled by the dust of her lotus feet. So we can see that this quote is actually underlining what Shishi Radharasa Sudhanidhi in verse number 4 from Srila Prabhupada Saraswati wants to put out the greatness of Sri Radhika. And Chaitanya Chait Amrita is underlining that wonderfully. And also, it makes very clear, because by bracing Radharani, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also braced, because he is in that mood of Radharani, with the inner feelings of Radharani, with the outshining of Radharani, so we cannot differ. The praise of Radharani here is the praise of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we are so lucky that we can have this darshan not only in the form of a deity. We have a description to get real darshan by the mercy of the Goswamis, by the mercy of these great souls, by the mercy of Guru, by the mercy of the whole Parampara, by the mercy of this Brahma chain which embraced us, we can have this darshan. Uravani Ji, I was just listening to you and I thought, yes, it's the mercy. We are living in the mercy. But then actually what is for me the greatest mercy that I feel that is that is someone there who's interested that I realize all this. Because before, yeah, we read Chaitanya Chaitamrita. We did a lot of service to, you know, the Sankitan book distribution mission. We were building, helping to build temples in in, in um, Mayapodam. We had this mercy. It is also like you said, a mercy, right? We did many things. We were lucky. We were, but now I feel most lucky. Why? Because I feel that Gurudev is interested that I realize it. You know, it's not only uh, doing anything anymore. It's not just being a good devotee or an active member of a spiritual organization or some, you know, giving good donations or whatever. You know, there are so many possibilities that we can get mercy or we can be active. Srila Prabhupada was 
always explaining this in Bhagavad Gita. If you cannot be a direct member of the Society for Krishna Consciousness, then you can help the devotees building temples like you remember that. No? In many years, we also were, you know, talking like this, feeling like this. Yes, I am a member. And uh, others can help and can also become members. I want to make members or whatever that was. But I feel now that someone is interested, that I realize Srimadhi Radhika's mercy for all the fallen souls by coming together with her beloved to help her beloved and help us to realize that we have this great luck that I can connect in her service. And I feel, I don't know, maybe I, I'm different. But I feel that Gurudev is interested that I should have this mercy. This is my greatest mercy. <laughs> that is inspiring me the most. Because for myself, I... I try my best, of course, I try my best to be my best. And sometimes I am not my best and, you know, I'm lazy or crazy. But someone is there, a Dasi of Srimati Radhika, who wants to help me to also realize that I am a Dasi. And that is really my heart, uh, most inspiring, uh, how do you say that, most touching point for myself. Because, um, yeah, that is actually my, my biggest um, inspiration in my, in my progress or in my desiring to, to continue this journey again and again and again every day. Because for myself, you know, sometimes I lose also my hope for myself. Because, of course, there's one million reasons to be hopeful. There's also, again, again and again, so many challenges and so many, uh, you know, I mean, coverings are possible also at the same time. So it depends where I focus and that will be my reality. So I focus always, I try to focus on this reality. My Gurudev, he wants to help me. He is interested that I can, this soul here in this body can uh, be, uh, you know, the Dasi of Srimati Radhika. She is the Dasi of Srimati Radhika and I will help her to realize it because like we heard yesterday, Chaitanya embraced Rupa Goswami because he liked her. He, he liked this devotee. He was, you know, favorable. So we are also very lucky that Gurudev has a, a liking on us, an interest on us. We are no foreigners anymore. We are not just one out of a million or one of thousands or so. Now we have become very lucky because we are in a personal relationship and our Gurudev has revealed to us who we are and we can grow into that consciousness more and more and shine in that service to Srimati Radhika by the mercy of our Gurudev who is also shining by the mercy of her Gurudev, her Guru Manjari. For me, I just wanted to say that is my, my greatest hope, my greatest uh, inspiration, my greatest motivation. Radhi. Thank you very much. I think this is another description of this chain of love, of this embrace. Because if you got it, you cannot hold on yourself to give it to others, isn't it? So that shows that our Gurudev, he got the mercy and when you feel that mercy, you, I mean, always he, he's telling us how much he feels 
the mercy of his Gurudev, of our Param Gurudev. And we also can feel more or less that this power of Param Gurudev is always here in this in this family and is working, vibrating. And this is again the mercy of Radharani. And it makes it so personally because Radharani is personally to every one of us. To some to true that person, to some true another person, but always very, very personal. I was so astonished in the beginning how personally Radharani is true Guru Manjari, true Param Guru Manjari, how personal Radharani is acting. I mean really so much personal that even for things out of my daily life she was taking care without I asked. Of course I didn't ask for that but she took care. I will give a, a very little example. I, I, I was on the road and I had nothing with me and I was uh, by a friend um, overnight for some time. And I didn't even have some shampoo or shower soap or something like this with me. So I, I felt bad when I used his. So I thought, oh my God, I'm I'm living here now for some time. I'm you know, he is taking care. But have I really to use that now? It's his and you know, like that. It was just a little thought. Two hours later some person came to me and was calling me and said here, I, I should give this to you from, from Radha. And I was shocked. Huh? From Radha? How does she know that I'm here? I didn't say anyone. It was in Abenteuer, you know. Radha Madan Mohan. And she was giving me a little bag. And inside were some mangal sweets. And shower gel, nothing else. Mangel sweets and shower gel. I was really shocked. How personal Radharani is taking care of every little detail in your life if you let yourself just fall into the mercy. Gurudev gave so often this example when he was meditating on the toilets, how to improve these toilets in the temple. And then Radha Mohan said, don't, don't meditate about toilets now. <laughs> everything will be fine. So, yes, look how fine everything is. What a standard. Now everybody of you know how it looks there in Munge Mandir. It's not that we ask for that, no. It's just inside our love. When love is touching you, it's, it's there. If you let your fall, yourself let, uh, if you let yourself fall into love, <laughs> then Everything is there. That's why Krishna can let himself fall into Radharani's arms with all his wishes, with all his needs. And he has really wishes, not like us. <laughs> They're not limited. <laughs> He is unlimited. His wishes are unlimited. But he can, can let himself fall into the care of Radharani. She will take care of all his wishes. And even of that he doesn't even know. 
He cannot even imagine So for Adarani, it's nothing to, to take care of our needs. Just include it into that mercy she is giving us. And I think this is actually when we are more conscious about this, this will stronger our faith and then we will also go through these times you described. Yeah, we all have these times, it's going up and down, and it's the material world. But this experience we have with Radharani will carry us through that bad times, very intense times. And this is what we actually read here, that the knowledge about the, uh, the power, the prowess of the goddess is actually giving this faith. And I'm so happy because I don't have to believe anything anymore. Because this is not a way of belief. If you are in God consciousness, you have to believe. Or you have to take all kind of knowledge and summarize it. But actually, we don't have to believe anything. No, I am not a believer. I honestly say I am not a believer. Radharani was catching my heart not by belief. She showed me practical that she's taking care. Like you say, someone really wants you to understand all this. Someone really wants you to go on this path. Someone really takes you by the hand very personally and brings you to the goal. This is the way we are going. It's not a question of belief. And I'm so thankful that Gurudev made this very clear. It's a way of experience. You let yourself fall into the hands and you will experience very personal care the most lovely care you ever had. And then it's not a belief. You know it. And this is the endless mercy of Gurudev when he starts with A, when a new person is coming. He's starting with A, philosophical basic points, <laughs> making friendship, and then take this person and lead this person to Radharani's lotus feet, make the connection till this person is embraced by Radhika and then sure in this chain the next one start by A B C and so on endless and this is love I could feel that this is actually the motherly love also from Radha coming through Gurudev. Like a small child, you know, start with A, A, B, C, and again. So this all is our Swamini's law for us. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 
has all this love inside, also the motherly love for every jiva is included. It's just included, it's not even a big thing. Because usually we don't discuss so much this topic. But in Radharani, all that is included. Which is already unbelievable. But it's just a small part. What to speak of all this rasa, which is coming out of the exchange of Radharani and her beloved, where we can be in the middle. We can be a part and we will be so fortunate that without our help, they will not be able to have full satisfaction. Like we heard also yesterday that Radharani is taking the hand of Tulsi in fear and Tulsi has to lead her. And Radharani is fully dependent on Tulsi Manjari. Or we wake up, this blue boy who felt unconscious with some poetry or song we learned from Radha. What a good luck, what a position. We should dance the whole day from morning till the evening and brace our Radhika and brace this chain of love, this parampara, brace all that what we got and we have. We should. But this will come by the time, by our realizations, not by belief. Realization, I invested something, I let myself fall into the arms of Radha, I made some experience, I got the experience, I see the love, I feel the love, I'm astonished by that love. And this is real, because it happened without belief, even against my belief. So this is the practical way, this is Raga Bhakti, in relationship. I'm in relation. I don't believe. No, I'm in relation. Do I believe or do I relate? Question is on what platform I relate also. Gurudev made it very clear so often on what platform he wants to have relation. Guru is not the goal, again and again. How many times he said? Yes, but he brings us to the goal. And we are very thankful for that. On the other side, we have to, to get warm with this idea that actually this is our family. And we also cannot 
stick into Aishwarya, you know. It is our family. It is just normal that we exchange love. Yes, we don't deserve it, but love is not asking for any qualification. Love is just there. So we also have to get warm with this thought that actually it is it is normal that we exchange love with Radharani, with Guru Manjari, that we exchange on this platform with our Sita Deha, always love. We have to get warm with this idea, not put it so far away. Because it's normal. I am a soul. Radharani and Krishna are always in Sambanda with me and I'm with them always. It is just like that because we know Nitya Sita Krishna Prema Satya Kabunoi. It is there. We have to just do it. On that platform, the spiritual Bhavadeya. But therefore, we have to first of all go into feelings, go into bhav. From that body where we can chant, we can have our sadhana. Satak deha, then sita deha. But we are so lucky that we got the mercy. And again, I want to end with what we started. Just the mercy glance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which is not different from the mercy glance of Shrishi, Radha and Mohan together in love, completely deep, deep, deep in the highest form of love, in the highest form of Mahabhav, they are watching us. So the glance of Radharani is shining from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and is giving us everything by mercy. No separate endeavor we need. Jai Shri Radhe. And this is all the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And that's why so many quotes are in all these books, because it's the base. This mercy is the base. The base for Sri Sri Radharasa Sudhanidhi, the base for Vilap Kusumanjali, the base for our sadhana, the base for our life, the base for our Sita Deha, it's the base. And we are so lucky that we have it and we got it by the mercy of Gurudev, the Parampara and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Nitai Gaura Haribol. So thank you very much for sharing and helping me, giving me your darshan, because Badarani is also giving darshan through her Radhadasis. Thank you all and see you soon. But if you want to share something, please. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. I today I felt every time I listen this class and then slowly, slowly I could feel 
um, how to say, the glory of the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because we are so beginner, and then we actually didn't can I say, study Chaitanya Chaitanya yet much. And then I always, I was always thinking, okay, I, I understand in my mind as, as a knowledge, the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Radharani and then Krishna and the manjar is inside. And then, yes, it's great. But then um, I always thinking, so how to meditate to, to glorify it or the, the fe having feelings to, about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then today I felt, okay, it's very slowly, but now little by little I could not understand, feel when you are talking about the Radharani in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is how great. And then, okay, maybe this is a very little point, but I feel oh, uh, he is very, or she is very great. Thank you so much every time for reading and sharing. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Garavani. It was so wonderful. You touched my heart so deeply. Thank you for helping me to come more to my feelings. Thank you. Thank you for your help. You are all helping me. And Gurudev especially is helping me because he's talking to this mouth. See you soon, Radhe Radhe.